Hey everybody, it's Saturday night and I've just been standing here enjoying my waterfall tank and I've been thinking about a question I get a lot. I get asked all the time in regards to all of my tanks uh, whether I use any food for my tanks or whether I inject CO2 and what foods do I use and so on and so forth and I often wonder about how people think about plant food. Now, I'm going to wax philosophic here a little bit because I'm going to talk about my theories on plant food and how I think about it. And that's just what I was doing. And it was starting to go down the rabbit hole of getting all sort of intermingled with everything as far as an ecosystem is concerned. It's hard to think about one aspect of what's going on without thinking about how that affects everything else in the entire ecosystem, whether it's the fish or the water chemistry or the light or anything else so like I said I was just starting to go uh, a little down the rabbit hole where I was thinking about all of this and how it uh, interacts with each other so I grabbed my camera and I'm gonna share all that with you hopefully so my first thoughts about the plant food and when I get asked about plant food and what I feed my plants I think about food a little differently than other people do. Most people refer to food as what I think about as fertilizer or trace minerals and trace elements. Even the macronutrients, the NPK, which the plants do need a fair amount of, still to me are more trace nutrients. You can feed plants their NPK um, very infrequently depending on the plant and its growth rate and its needs. Uh, these um, peace lilies here for example, I have some of them in, in planters that I haven't transplanted in over a year and maybe once or twice a year if I think about it I'll feed them a little bit of miracle Grow. you know some basic 15-15-15 goes in them and they do fine. So if that was its food it probably wouldn't still be alive and yet there it is all lush and green and looking beautiful and in fact I've even got some flower spikes coming off the one in my kitchen and it gets a lot less light than this one does. So that brings me to my point of what I think about food and food is where let's say animals, let's say us in this case, we get our energy from food. You know if you're thinking about like the NPK and stuff that's not where the plant gets its energy that would be the equivalent to our vitamin pills you know the the plant gets its energy from light and it gets its building material and its building blocks from the air so if you think about in terms of us and our food you could think about the light and the air as sort of the proteins and the carbohydrates and then everything else would be all of the vitamins and the trace minerals and all of that kind of stuff. But you need the energy and you need the building materials. And in this case, uh, the, the sugars and the building materials all sort of go hand in hand because the plants use the light to take the air and make sugars to use as energy or use it to build uh, you know, structural material to build the plant. You know, when you look up and you see a mighty oak, that, that's not built out of the nitrogen it pulled out of the ground. That's not built out of anything that came out of the soil. That giant tree you're looking at is built out of air and sunshine. And that, to me, is just mind-blowing. That is just so fascinating when I look at plants. You're looking at the physical manifestation basically the, the material result of air and light and of course in this case you've got the situation where the light is the energy source but you still need the balance of all of those other trace elements and that's where I was starting to go down the rabbit hole because I was thinking in this case you know I've got this really intense light on here and I was starting to think about the quality of light and of course the higher quality of light and the more light you have the more of all of those trace elements and trace nutrients and minerals you need so you certainly can't do without any of those but in this case, all of that's provided by what's going on down here in the tank itself. I've got all of my fish in there that are eating stuff and pooping away and their digestion's working. And I've got wood that's rotting and breaking down. And 
you know, biology and nature and chemistry has all taken its course and it's providing some of those basic, you know, base nutrients, all of that plant material that's breaking down. Well, the plant is, you know, the, those plants are made out of all the things plants need to live. So as it breaks down, it's reintroducing a lot of that stuff back into the water. And when I test this water, you know, I can't test for all of the different uh, nutrients. I actually haven't tested for phosphates. That'll be interesting to uh, see how many phosphates I have in this tank. But every time I test for nitrates, I always come up with none or very little. Last time I tested, I actually do remember I did get some but it was enough to basically cause some color change uh, in the vial, and that was about it. So probably less than five parts per million. So, you know, that's, if you're familiar with my channel, you're familiar with all my tanks and familiar with my videos, you'll know that, you know, zero or very few nitrates is not the norm for my tanks. Most of my tanks have very, very high uh, nitrates by comparison, you know, 60, 80, 100 parts per million is not unusual and that's because they are planted and that's all well and good we've got lots of plants going on in there but the amount of co2 that is in the water and the rate of growth that we get on those plants there's just no possible way those plants can absorb all of the nutrients because they don't get enough light or carbon dioxide these plants being exposed to atmospheric air, tons of carbon dioxide, especially down here in my basement where right now we are... We'll have to wait for the cycle to go around again. So we are at 900 parts per million. CO2 and that is three times the normal background level. If these plants were outside they'd all be exposed to about 300 parts per million, maybe 400 parts per million nowadays. Um, but 900 parts per million is a lot of CO2 for these plants. They are also getting flooded with a very high quality light that very much replicates natural sunlight. So the other uh, thing that a lot of people don't think about when it comes to lights and plants and plant growth is that plants actually use a lot of green light. A lot of people tend to think that plants don't use any green light or they use very little or they only need trace amounts of it. That's not true. Plants use more green light than any other spectrum. It's just that outside under natural sunlight conditions there's so much green light that the plants have more than they can possibly ever use and therefore they reflect some of it and they obviously only reflect some of it because all the different plants are all different shades of green and different intensities of green so clearly they're absorbing tons of green light and then they're reflecting some green light so this myth that because plants are green they don't use any green light it's simply not true and then of course you can see uh, very clearly I've got plants in there that are red and so what's the argument with there these use green light but they don't use red light you know all plants use all uh, spectrums of light so the better quality of light you have the better quality of plant growth you're going to get so you know, when you're using fluorescence, there's just no fluorescent out there that's going to give you a really, really good high quality light. Um, again, I don't know how I'm, I'm going to go start going down the rabbit hole talking about light. That one starts getting really weird. And that's exactly why I picked up my camera. I didn't want to uh, let myself go down too far thinking about all this stuff without getting some of it. Uh, on video. I always like to throw some kind of discussion topics out there from time to time. So I'm not going to talk too much more about the light and the quality of light and the spectrums of light and so on and so forth, but I will say that these Cree X lamps actually produce a little more green light than most LEDs, even the full spectrum, full white LEDs. Again, you're never going to get it with the 
fluorescent, so no matter what kind of quality of fluorescent light you get, you're just never going to get this kind of vigorous growth. And then, of course, you also, you know, it helps to be down in your basement or in a closed-in room where there's going to be elevated levels of CO2 just because of, you know, being in there and breathing and maybe having some candles burning during the day. I will often burn a propane space heater down here in the basement. Uh, that always jacks up the CO2 levels. And then again, with these high levels of light and plenty of nutrients in the water from the fish, I just get this lush, lush growth. So again, what do you think is the food here? Is it the nutrients in the water from the fish? Is that what you would call the food? Is that where the plant's getting its energy? Or is the food the actual light that's shining on it and the air I'm breathing on it and the CO2 that's coming out of my lungs? Is that the food? And then all of the other stuff, the NPK, the, the boron, the manganese, you know, the, the, the trace, trace elements, is that the food? Because that's what most people mean when they say, you know, the, the food, what do you feed your tanks? So give me your thoughts down below. I know that was a bit of a ramble, but like I said, I was going to wax philosophic here a little bit on a Saturday night. And uh, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. So make sure you're subscribed. You never know what you're going to get with me. And then don't forget, of course, this one here is my waterfall tank. So thanks for watching. I'll see you real soon in the next one.